Hi, everybody. Welcome back to NBAA TV. I'm Amy Sweezy, and my next guest is Chris Broyhill. Chris, of course, is from Air Comp Calculator, but Chris, you are known as the numbers guy around here. I am. I'm the data geek. <laughs> So you are speaking on Wednesday. Correct. And you are giving a session on compensation. Tell me a little bit about some of the takeaways, what people will hear if they attend your session. Well, the um, I sit on the committee at the NBAA that oversees the NBAA compensation survey. So we're going to present from da some data from the NBAA compensation survey, track some trends in a few positions over time, just to show people what the data is going or how the data is going in, in, in a numerical sense or in a graphic sense. And then we're going to then talk about imaginative solutions that some companies are employing from a compensation perspective to retain their employees. And we'll have some great panelists. We've got Kelly Rittenhouse, who runs Hangar Management, Director of Aviation there. Uh, she's been in a position like that for like the last 12 years. She'll be talking about that. We have Jennifer Pickerell from Aviation Personnel International. She'll be talking about what she's seeing from the consulting side. And then finally, we'll, we'll have Steve Olmstead, who is the Director of Aviation for Richardson Aviation in Fort Worth. But previously to that, he was the director of aviation for American Express. So he's seen like the whole gamut and they're going to share some of their stories and some of their techniques and some of the things they've done. It should be a fascinating session. Do you feel like the compensation survey is geared more toward people who are hiring or people who are being hired? Yes. Both. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's for people who are hiring. The compensation survey presents data that, you know, they can reference in terms of how they're going to price the jobs that they're looking for personnel to fill. And if you are a hiree, it gives you a source of data to decide, am I being offered a, you know, a compensation range that makes sense for the position I'm going after? Will you actually give numbers in your session? Will you yes. say, if you're doing this job, you should be making this range of money? Uh, I'm gonna show, not necessarily, but I will show you people where the averages are for certain jobs. So they can just kind of see, and the averages are, are, are they're nice reference numbers, but they're not numbers that you know, really mean anything in the big scheme of things because they're not specific enough. They're not granular enough for the individual jobs. And are they kind of skewed because you get one person way up here and one way down here and then your average is kind of thrown yeah, off? Yeah, anytime you have an average, that's just the reason why compensation professionals and for the consulting work I do, we focus a lot on percentiles. 50th percentile specifically is a central tendency measure because it is not affected by outliers either on the low side or the high side. Although sometimes you can do, this is data geek thing, you can do skew analysis where you see how far apart the median and the average are, and then you can see which direction the data set is skewed. And then you can point out the culprits that are either paying too low or occasionally too high, so. And you didn't set out to be the expert on compensation. You just kind of became the numbers guy. Tell me I, why. I did not. I'm a, I was a, I'm a retired fighter pilot from the Air Force. So my one liner about my life is from fighter pilot to compensation geek. I've got no idea how that happened. <laughs> uh, you want to make God laugh, make plans. So. Um, I got a PhD in 2016. Uh, I was sitting on a committee at the NBAA called the Business Aviation Management Committee, and I'm about to roll off of that. And they, I'd come back fresh from my dissertation defense, and they said, well, Mr. well, doctor, now that you've got this wonderful degree, why don't you do some research on why people are leaving business aviation, go to the airlines. And at that time, we were having an exodus problem as well. This is in 2016, so I did the study, presented the results in 2017. Suddenly, I became the expert. People started calling me, hey, you're the guy that knows this stuff. Come look at us. What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? Help us. And from that, the compensation piece just kind of grew on its own because I had to get into the data and figure out what the best way is to recommend compensation ranges in a way that's defensible. So, yeah, grateful to have right place, right time. Grateful to be here. And this information is really, you know, not only about helping companies hire, but also retain. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, I, I've seen that in my consulting work. I've seen that from a couple of perspectives. Uh, clients will come to me and they'll say, you know, we have people that either are thinking about leaving or have left elsewhere. What do we need to do to our compensation to make it better? And I'll go in and examine their compensation ranges and say, well, you need to move this one up or this one up or what have you. And then occasionally companies will be in the hiring game. And, I, and a story that happened to me recently, I had a big pharmaceutical company. They wanted to hire captains for their airplane and they got five people through the final interview process and they finally got to the compensation discussion and every single one of them said, nope, not doing this, you're not paying enough, we'll see you. And they couldn't hire anybody purely because of what they were paying and they were out of touch with the market. So yes, in both regimes, absolutely. Do you think it's important for the hiring process to discuss money right up front? And then you'd... In today's, so everybody says, and, and I, I'm, I would not necessarily argue against this, that 
there are things that keep you in a job that are not compensation related. There's quality of life, there's the culture of the organization. But when you are coming in from the outside, you don't know any of these things. You have what people tell you, but you don't really know where you are for like six to nine months. And I think the transparency with which a company is willing to engage in a compensation discussion early on in the process tells you a lot about their people-oriented culture. Are they secretive? Are they trying to do things on the sly? Are they trying to get you on the cheap? Or are they gonna come right out and say, our range is from point X to point Y, you know, tell us what you think. And, and I think that, that goes a long way. It, it certainly would give me a, a much warmer fuzzy about you know, the culture of the company if they did that. Right. I think high, you know, issues with hiring, retaining workforce, it's kind of a sign of the times. I feel like there's a lot of industries that are dealing with this. Yes. Do you think there are specific things you know, within the business aviation industry that is contributing to these issues? Well, I think the biggest thing that we're hearing a lot about, and certainly it's a major issue, is the pull of the major airlines. Uh, coming out of COVID, um, they, they found themselves in a real body squeeze because when COVID first hit, they offered early retirements to all of a lot of their older pilots. Mm -hmm. Once those pilots retire, they can't get them back. So they lost the deficit there and then they furloughed people on the front. So now they're vigorously hiring people back, but they don't have the bodies to fill all the cockpits. And as a result, they've been pulling from business aviation from, for a while, but now in, in light of the newest airline contracts um, uh, in March, Delta negotiated to raise their pay 34%. In August, uh, the American Airlines pilots approved a contract to raise their pay 46%. And United just recently approved a contract to raise their pilots pay 40%. And now the Delta contract has a thing in it called a snap up clause where they're, they're entitled to make 1% more than the best paying airline out there. So now that's getting triggered and those rates are going up as well. All the while you've got business aviation people, aviation managers trying to pay their people enough to not make that transition. Now you do have people in business aviation that love the industry so much. I'm one of them. I would never go fly an airliner. The thought of it bores me. Right. But you have a lot of people that are on that fence. They're kind of like voters. You've got the people that are definitely going to do it. People are not going to do it and all the undecideds and the undecideds are who you have to win the hearts and minds of. And yes, quality of life's important. You got to let them have a predictable life to the extent you can. Good culture in your organization, obviously very important, but paying them enough so they feel valued. And so you can be somewhat competitive with the airlines is a big deal. And that's where all the data comes in and that's where I can. Okay, so Wednesday at one o'clock, that's yes, when your session. Yep. No, you're not, to not miss session. Yes, yes. <laughs> Everybody needs to be at, but also you have an exhibit here with your business inside I do, uh, Aircom Calculator has a booth, a 10539. And happy to talk to anybody or anyone about compensation to their heart's content, I love it. Fantastic. Thank all right, Chris Broyhill, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Good luck on Wednesday. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we will be back with much more. You are watching NBAA TV.